RF man here. Today I'm going to demonstrate a new protection circuit that I've been working on for the LDMOS amplifier, both the single LDMOS and dual LDMOS amplifiers. Uh, this protection circuit is basically a generic circuit, so it can be used on almost any type of amplifier. Now before I go into the details, I tried a couple of different approaches here. I uh, originally tried using the voltage drop across my shunt resistor. Most of us have a current meter in our amplifiers and there's some type of a shunt resistor there which you can see. And I try to sense the voltage drop across the shunt resistor but there's just too much noise to be able to discern between the voltage across the shunt which is 75 millivolts for full scale deflection which would be 100 amps in this case so if I was at 50 amps it would be half that half of 75 so 32.5 so the voltage levels are very low too low to really trigger on or detect with the, all the RF noise that's present in, in any RF system uh, but I did attempt to do that and then I went ahead and designed another circuit to use the input from the transceiver. So basically the amount of drive that you're putting in to the amplifier. But again, it was not too reliable. I had to have a way of triggering on the RMS and also on the PEP to protect the amplifier from, from both of those parameters. So I finally, after some experimenting, decided to try to sense the DC current. And basically each time you key on and off on the microphone, um, you have instantaneous current on your positive rail. So I researched ways of measuring that and I, I did come up with a device which I'll briefly show you here. It's called a current transformer which can be used as a current sensing device. I'll just lay it on the table there, get a better look at it. Okay, and this is a transformer and I guess we all know that transformers work with AC but they don't work with DC and the reason why is with direct current we don't have a change in the direction of that current it's not alternating so we don't have an expanding and collapsing magnetic field typically a transformer has a primary and secondary and the voltage in the primary causes an expanding and collapsing magnetic field and that magnetic field induces voltage into the secondary now with DC it's just continuous DC current However, when you do key your mic, you do get instantaneous current flowing in, which couples into the transformer and causes an output pulse. So I'm going to go ahead and, and demonstrate that so you can see what I'm talking about. All right, so now I have this set up. Uh, there's the circuit, which uses the current transformer. And I'll explain the rest of the circuit after this brief demonstration uh, but I wanted to explain this concept first before I go into a detailed overview of the actual circuit but here is my current transformer and here is the 50 volt conductor okay which goes through the center as you can see there through the center of the current transformer so the center conductor acts as my primary winding and then the CT or current transformer has a secondary winding so if I set my oscilloscope to capture a single event and we go ahead and key up the mic we're gonna see the pulse that's coupled into that transformer so before I do that uh, I'm just wanted to give a brief overview on what I'm doing uh, I'm using my striker as usual, my 755, got the dual LD MOS 
amplifier set up here with the same fixture and you got my bird 43 meter and we'll be uh, initially transmitting at around 1200 watts or so using my my dummy load down there as you can see so here we have the oscilloscope set up for a single sequence okay so when I key up it'll automatically trigger okay and we can see the pulse there okay let me uh, reset okay and we'll key up again okay again you can see the pulse all right one more time okay so each time I key the mic I get instantaneous current and as that current flows through the primary of the transformer which again is just a single conductor here okay causes an expanding magnetic field which couples into the secondary and gives me that instantaneous pulse okay if you look at the time base on the oscilloscope I'm about 200 microseconds per division so it's about 200 microsecond pulse measured at the base of the waveform and I'm on 5 volts division so you can see it's about 10 volts peak okay so that's what we're using to detect the level of current and if we reduce the input drive we'll reduce our output current and we'll reduce the amplitude of that pulse and it is directly proportional so I can use that pulse for my overcurrent protection circuit all right so there's a closer look at the circuit you know like all my designs I start with a paper design and then I build a prototype on a breadboard and then I go ahead and and test it under different conditions so my design approach is very similar for all my projects um, this particular design uses a comparator and all we do is we take this multi-turn potentiometer we set the reference on the comparator and when the input pulse that you see here is equal to or greater than that reference then it will go ahead and trigger an SCR which acts as a latch and it lights up this LED okay so you can use that signal a number of different ways it is a latch uh, let me just briefly explain what an SCR does for those of you who may not be completely familiar with it or those of you that might need a refresher but an SCR basically has a gate plus a cathode and an anode and when you trigger the gate okay it can be just a short pulse well one millisecond or, or less but the device stays on until the power is removed so once it's triggered it latches stays on and continues to conduct the only way to shut it off is to reset the power in the circuit so you see here I got this reset switch okay and that was done intentionally so if you do have a condition where this circuit turns on to protect your amplifier you would have to then intentionally reset the circuit uh, after you do your troubleshooting to see what might have been wrong uh, so it's designed that way just to add another layer of protection where it actually latches and then has to manually be reset so comparators are very easy to use uh, they're very reliable and it really simplifies the design you can also use an op amp and basically do the same thing but comparators have a couple more features that I like you can add hysteresis things like that so I'm going to go ahead and, and demonstrate this now and show how it works all right so I've got the input power set to give me approximately 25 amps as you can see there and that gives me around almost a thousand watts RMS and I've got the threshold of the comparator set so that it'll allow me to operate at this current level so if we key up
I can transmit safely at 25 amps, 1000 watts. All right, and the comparator does not trigger, the LED stays off. Now what I'm gonna do next is turn the power level up and demonstrate how the circuit will latch. All right, so now we're gonna turn the power level up. You can see I've increased the current level there. And I'm transmitting now at around 1200 and 50 watts okay so we'll go ahead and reset our comparator we'll key up the mic and you can see that it latches go ahead and reset it again key it up again and one more time okay now I just picked these current levels and these power levels just for demonstration purposes but with the multi-turn pot, you could set it so you could transmit at 1250 and have it trigger and protect your, your circuit at 1500 watts. Or you could go up to 1500 watts or beyond that, 1750 watts. Uh, so you can set that threshold anywhere you want. Uh, you can either use the current as an indicator or the output power but again I just used 25 amps and 30 amps and a thousand watts and 1250 watts just for demonstration purposes so it has pretty good resolution um, it's very easy to adjust basically you just keep adjusting the pot until it, it doesn't latch at the power level that you want to transmit at okay and then give it one more turn clockwise and that's all you need to do so if the power level goes beyond the threshold that you set it it will go ahead and switch on and latch and illuminate the LED now you can use that signal a number of different ways I'm just showing an LED turning on and off here in my circuit but you can use that signal to disable the keying circuit or keying relay that'll protect your amplifier or you can use that signal to disable a contactor and shut your 50 volts off. That'll also protect your amplifier if you're using a contactor. Or another option, and, and maybe uh, the easiest option, if your power supply is equipped with some logic controls like a power good signal, um, you could basically just connect to one of those pins and disable and shut the power supply down with the logic signal. I know the HP ESP120 has a number of logic control lines, so you can connect directly to that and switch the power supply off. So it can be used a number of different ways to protect the amplifier. I thought I would spend a little time demonstrating this. And if there's enough interest, I'll go ahead and create a PC board which I source out of China and uh, I'll make these available for sale so please leave your comments and give me your feedback and yeah if there's enough interest and enough demand we'll go ahead and uh, create a production version of this and offer it for sale okay again RF man thank you for your time